If you don't have hope, man, you don't have anything. Hope, I need hope. Hope for my marriage, hope for my child, hope for this sickness. Man, I, somebody's diagnosed with cancer. I need I need hope. Diagnosed with the life-threatening, I need hope. My wife, I found out she cheated on me. I need some hope. My husband cheated on I need hope. My child, what like so the the book really is my my hope is that it provides hope. That's right. And it's real life stories that are absolutely insane and hard to believe because they're not normal. I mean, they are they are miraculous. What is up, my entrepreneur DNA family? I am here with a very, very special guest. His name is Travis Hearn. He goes by Pastor Trav. He runs an organization with tens of thousands of individuals. He is the key consigliere, if you will, to the athletes and the nine-figure entrepreneurs, the 10-figure entrepreneurs. This man is dynamic at every sense of the word. Pastor Trav, what's up, bro? Hey, man, that's a great intro. Thank you for, for having me today. Well, you're a great human, so let's get into it. Listen, you are the go-to guy for a lot of athletes. I mean, the names you can drop and the, and the teams that you can drop and what you've been able to accomplish at this phase of your life is incredible. But I know it wasn't always that way. Let's, let's just get everyone to the point of you've been able to build something. You have an organization, Impact Church there in Scottsdale, Arizona. Very familiar. Our close friend Cody Sperber goes there. Um, but I want to know about how you've been able to build this entire, what I would almost call like an empire, right? You are the go-to coach for entrepreneurs. You are the go-to coach for athletes. And then you make a massive impact on tens of thousands of individuals as a pastor. But let's start at the beginning. How did it all start for you? Yeah, I think it's a great question to start with because um, I, I, I'm probably the black sheep of church and pastors. Um, I, I'm not, I didn't grow up in church. Um, I, I grew up around church and, yeah. you know, kind of like I always say surrounded, but not really surrendered. You know, sure. my, my life was um, broken families, broken home. Uh, you know, my, my mother uh, w never had a father, raised in Southern California, and then, you know, then her mother was raped and murdered mm. when my mom was 13 years old. Then three years later, that, that moved my mother to Arizona mm -hmm. to live with her only, her grandmother, yeah. her, her only family member. Three years later, she's 16. She has me. Uh, so that's the start of me. Like, it's rough before it's rough, right? Yeah, and right. so for me, I grew up, like, with drug addicts and alcoholism. And, and I, I didn't grow up in church. Yeah. And so the end of my senior year in high school... Um, you know, I, 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 all through high school partied and drank and smoked and basically tried to smoke whatever you could smoke. I smoke a, <laughs> I, I smoke a banana peel, I think one time just to see if something would happen, that's you know, right. like that, that's, that's, that's my history. That's who I am. And, and I, I got, I got a DUI. Um, I was beyond drunk, um, got put in jail Okay. and the same night I, I say it like this, like I went from, I went from jail to Jesus, you know? And so I, to answer the question, I never really thought about pastoring a church. Yeah. Um, I was an athlete. I played basketball, football, baseball, quarterback, point guard, catcher, like kind of the leader of all the sports and uh, excelled in sports as a, as a child, you know, and, and, and man, I, I just, I needed something, man. I, yeah. I was that guy. Yeah. It looked like you got it together on the outside. Sure. Like, look at this dude, man. He's, you know, all state this and that and blah, blah, blah. And it was like inside. I'm like, dude. I'm broken. Sure. And I, I think the nature of the story, I mean, I end up on the front page, you know, her and arrested for DUI. Like that's, yeah, that's, that's who one. I am. Yeah. And so, so I, I just found something, man. I, I felt like I found something that, that, that meant so much to me. For me, it yeah. was God. And, and, and I just said, man, I want to give this to the world. And so that, I, that story, Hey, you, you, you became a Christian. You're not, weren't a Christian. Like, like, DUI, you know, you got arrested, jailed to Jesus, like, and then everybody would be like, hey, will you come share your story at youth group, at school, yes, at churches, at camps, or whatever. You gave me shivers thinking about how your mom's mom and then your mom having you at 16, you just go, I have a story. It's nothing like, not as dark as that is, frankly, right? Everyone has a story. Yes. Um, but, you know, one thing you, you said that actually triggers this next coming question, which is, do you see with all the counseling that you do for the high figure earners in entrepreneurship to the top tier professional sports, whether it's football and baseball and everyone that you counsel, do you see to some extent some of the highest level performers have some level of a story underneath it? No question. I mean, absolutely no question. Yeah. And I, I think for me, so I started, I started working with pro athletes 23 years ago Yeah. from the NFL to MLB to NBA still do. 
um, our church started as a Bible study for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, that was the, the, the beginning in a house, like a few athletes and then eventually open it up to the public. Our Bible study was called impact pro athletes and eventually open it to the world and it's impact church. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this 23 years ago when I started, I, I, I probably like anybody else, I'm starstruck. Yeah. Like 23 years ago, I'm walking down the hallway of the Phoenix Suns arena, you know, we were playing the Lakers. And I'm like, dude, that's Kobe. That's Man. Shaq. Like, those are some big names. Yeah. And Shaq's a big dude, big you know, boy. and such a good dude. But it, 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 and then within, man, maybe the, the way it works in the NBA is we have chapel before every game. Mm. So both teams are invited. So, so one, one hour. And yeah. So say Suns, opposing. Lakers, Suns, Golden yeah. State, whatever. So the, the teams come together. There's a room. Every, every team does it. Every league does it. The NFL does it. NBA does it. MLB does it. Which, how about that? That's interesting because we think of NBA and MLB and NFL as like athletes, sure. WNBA athletes, and they are. That's a business. Oh, it's all a business. It's a business. Right. Church right. is so, a business. And church is a business, That's no right. doubt. I mean, there, there's a there's a stewardship of, of money and finances and growth and yeah. things that you have to – employment. You have to pay people and you, so you have to make people. money to pay people. Of course. I mean, you can't have the growth that you guys had without revenue, right? I mean, it just doesn't work. No way. doubt. No doubt. And, and being smart about it and right. being, you know – um, but, but going back to your question, you know, for me, uh, the starstruck went away in a hurry because one day after chapel, this well-known athlete, you know, he stayed around and he was, he started to cry. Mm. I mean, bro, we were going to play basketball in 45 minutes. It's almost game time. And he, he, you know, big seven footer, he's crying and he's like, bro, I need help. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, Hey man, uh, man, I, I'm married. I got kids. I got another woman pregnant while I was on the road. And like, I'm like, he's like, can you help? And I'm like. He said, he said this, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I know what you shouldn't have done. <laughs> you already did. You shouldn't have so done her. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, but you know, that, that's the thing is like, whether it's celebrities, whether it's big earners, whatever, they're people, man. And you cut somebody, they bleed. They hurt. They mistakes. They, they, they make, we all do. We all make mistakes. And, and I mean, I think that's where I come from is just like, I'm still making mistakes every single day. But I, I feel like I've found some answers in life. And so try to give them away. That's right. Well, that, speaking of big game and way, let's let's get to what I'm excited about. You have a book coming out, dude. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be fire. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, let's right. talk about the book. Right. Well, the book is titled "The Fire Is For You," and it and it really comes from. Um, uh, I wasn't going to write a book, but I went through hell and back. Yeah. And so, two years ago, um, November 14th of 2022, this is the crazy craziest story. Um, I'm in great health. This is two years ago. I I I, I um. I had a stroke. I had a brain aneurysm, a brain bleed. And to give you the background, um, our church had just, we, we, we started getting into the music space. So mm. impact worship, impact music and releasing songs. And the first song we ever released to the world, it was called He is the Miracle. Okay. That was on Friday, November 11th of 22. It's called He is the Miracle. This is crazy. I mean, this is crazy, crazy, next level crazy. Is we released this song. We've never done it before. First song we wrote, recorded, produced, goes on to all music platforms, right? So on Sunday, to theme with that, I preached a sermon titled, He is the Miracle. And I opened my remarks with, hey, I believe God still does modern day miracles. Like he's still, he's still the God of the Bible. And, and, and on Sunday, our, uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, our song started to chart on the iTunes charts, which which is crazy. Like we we didn't expect that. Yeah, and we've never done this before, right? So it charts and it gets into the top 100, and then it gets into the top 75, 50, you know, 10. Dude, it, it went all the way to number one. So mm. on Sunday, it went all the way to number one. That's awesome. We screenshot it. Having, I mean, we didn't win a Grammy or like a you know, yeah. but like that was pretty cool, man. Like first time we ever did something. Um, and then Monday. I needed the very miracle that I just preached about and that we sang about. And so I, I was, um, we, we stopped by the church. Um, man, I don't know if you're ready for this. Cause this is, this is wild. This, th this I, dude, story already getting shivers. This like, story is wild. When I tell people there's people that you meet that give you that feeling, right? Whether it's you're dating someone or whatever the case, but like right now, pastor Trav, like I've known him all of 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, bro. He's already given like, this is the real dude. If you don't know, Get his book when this drops, because I'm getting shivers already from all this stuff that's going on. Go ahead. Yeah, this this is crazy. I take no credit. This is just, this is, whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, I'm not here to talk about that other than I do, and I believe this was a, a God thing. So so we we go from 
you know, we, we, we pick up my daughter, my wife and I at school at three, at 3 PM from school, we go to the church office and church, the, 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 it's a big place. We're in my office and, um, me and my daughter, Jazzy, she's 12 at the time. We're going to go to, to, to the grocery store, to Target actually. And Natalie's going to stay my wife and do some work. And I had a handful of grapes and, and I started dropping like a grape every now and then. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm dropping grapes. But that morning we did cold plunges and so ice. Thought maybe and she, I, ice. So I just thought something, yeah, residual yeah. from that. I'm like, that's weird. And so, dude, we drive. I'm having a stroke. I have no idea. We drive to, to, to Target and I text my wife when we get there and I said, hey, I've dropped like five grapes. That's weird. She calls me, dude, in an absolute panic. Travis, please stay in your car. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. And I'm like, babe, I'm dropping grapes. Like, I'm good. My yeah. head didn't hurt. My vision was good. My face wasn't droopy. My speech. And she goes, read back what you sent me. Because I said, I'm dropping grapes. Read. She goes, read back what you sent me. And it was more like, I'm draping grapes. But I, I didn't know that. Right? So I'm, I'm, re I'm reading back. And she's like, I'm coming to get you. So she comes and picks me up. She takes me to the house. And she's begging me to call 911. And I'm like, babe. Like we're men. Like yeah, I'm not calling yeah, yeah. nine. Like I'm not. Like, I don't need a doctor. Like I dropped some grapes, yeah. man. You know. Yeah. And then I I dropped my cell phone a few times, and yeah. so she's in a panic. I said, "Babe, I must sleep for an hour. That's it. And if I still feel weird, w w w maybe I'll go." Yeah. She's like, "Please don't go to bed. Please, please, please." I lay down, man, for five minutes, and I'm like, "Nah, nah. Something's not. Something's definitely not right." Yeah. So right at that same time, she came in and she's like, please. I said, okay, let, let's, let's call. Bro, we call 911. I'm not thinking stroke. This isn't in my head at all. Natalie goes around the hallway and she goes, I think my husband's having a stroke. Mm. And then I'm like, yo, what? Like in my head, I'm like, this woman, she's, she's, she's crazy. Yeah. Like, so the paramedics go, well, if, if you think that lay him down on his back, when I tell you they arrived at my house in three minutes, they arrived at my house in three Which minutes. Which is great to hear, right? Three minutes. That's awesome. Three minutes. Yeah. So I got four paramedics. I'm laying on my back, and, and I checked out. They do a stroke test. They, they you know, they, they do every test. They have an actual stroke test. They did a stroke test. I passed. Everything's fine. Natalie's still begging me to go. Now she's begging them, please tell him to go. So I'm laying on my back, and I looked up at one of the firefighters. His name was Ryan. And I go, bro, what do you think I should do? And he goes, pastor, as a member of your congregation, I think you should go. Mm. Bro, I had no idea who this guy was. I'd never seen him in my life. Yeah. He got the call. He didn't know he was coming into his pastor's house. Sure. He didn't know until he saw me. Yeah. He walked in, saw the beard, and I had a Phoenix Suns hoodie on. And he was like, whoa, that, like, that's my pat. We'd never even met before. And so I'm getting stretcher. I said, okay, let's go. I get stretchered out. I wave to Natalie and Jazzy, and I go, it's okay, I'll be right back. Dad's going to get, you know, checked out. Yeah. The hospital's four-minute drive. Okay. Um, they do a brain scan, and my brain's bleeding badly, Oof. like aggressively. Yeah. Um, and, and they call my wife, and then they had to helicopter me to a different, a level one trauma center. Yeah, because they don't that, have it. They specialize in neurology and, and hemorrhagic strokes, and... I, the thing about mine is, so it, it, it would, your brain can, you know, it could bleed from anywhere, right? And certain things affect, if it bleeds here, it might affect your speech. If it bleeds here, it might affect your memory or whatever. Mine was in the brainstem. So it affect everything. Mm. They said it's the worst, it's the worst stroke you could have. It's the worst imaginable that you, you the, like when, when I, I went from guys, I'll be okay. I'm going to go get checked to load it onto the ambulance. I don't remember anything. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember the ambulance ride over, uh, the scan, the hell. I mean, I remember like, you know, like that's probably the power of being a dad though. Yeah. You won't let yourself go until finally you get in the ambulance and you can surrender and go, oh yeah. yeah. And, and then your body shuts down. I mean, it happens. So like my example would be my mom. Yeah. He literally stayed alive until I could say goodbye. Yeah. Right. Bro. But that's the power of what a body can do. And yeah, man. So you probably finally surrendered and then you bl blacked out or whatever you may have done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so um, I, I lost my speech. I lost my memory. I lost my cognition. I lost my motor skills. I'm hospitalized and laid up in a hospital bed. And, um, you know, they, they, they would come, the way they do a stroke, te the way they m manage your progress or not is they, uh, they come in every hour on the hour mm -hmm. and they do this series of tests. And, 
Hey, what's your name? What's your date of birth? What year is it? What day is it? Who's your wife? Who's your kids? It's that over and over. Touch your nose. And I, I mean, I'm like gibberish. Yeah. And I'm, you know, trying to touch my nose and I can't and lift your leg and I, I can't lift my leg. And, um, and while I was hospitalized, I don't know, second day, maybe third day, uh, the, the doctor told my wife, Hey, um, we want to prepare you because the effects of this particular stroke, they're irreversible. Mm. So they're telling her this, this is, this is your husband. This is your new husband. Yeah. Like he's a vegetable. Interesting. Right. And so my my wife is a woman of faith and she, she's not going to buy that. She, I mean, we love doctors and believe in doctors and science and medicine, but she went straight to the Bible and, and she didn't know what she was looking for, but she needed something to hold on to her. And she went to this verse in the book of Acts chapter 316. And I'm just going to summarize it because I don't actually know it by heart. But it's like, by faith, this man whom you see is completely healed hmm. in Jesus name. So she just grabbed that. Of course. I mean, like, it's the first thing you see after the doctor says this. Yeah. Like, that's like, okay, man, I'm holding on to this. And dude, the miracle of the story is the miracle is because we, you know, he is the miracle. What we've been singing about, preaching about, teaching about, believing about is that God began to rapidly heal me mm. rapidly, so rapid that it went from the effects are irreversible to I got out on Friday. So I was hospitalized Monday. I got out Friday wow. evening. Wow. And so, um, yeah, so man, I, I, you know, I then went into rehab. I mean, it's also, it's a combination of like, I believe divinity, but also like putting the work in. Oh, so yeah. rehab and therapy. I was doing six six therapy sessions, six days a week. I mean, all day. It was a full time job. Yeah, I'm not, you know, leading my church, preaching at my church. I've got other people coming in and doing it, and managing it, and holding it down. And and um and man, it it changed my life. And so I, I wrote a book. There's an entire book about it. The fire is for you. And I think that's a great title because one of the chapters is called the fire is for you, right? But if you think about, we all go through fires in life, man. You, sometimes it might be in, in your business. Like, man, it feels like we're putting out fires all the time. Employment issues, putting out fires all the time. Yeah. Um, um, you know, all those different fires in life, your marriage, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your child. Like, there's just like life is full of fires, man. Totally. Fires. And, and, and the Bible uses three metaphors for, for trial. Okay. And it, it uses storms. I'm going through a storm, man, like life is raining down on me. It, it, it uses valleys. That's a famous one, like Psalm 23. Reason valleys. Yeah, and we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? right? And, and that's like the low place, the low places in life. And then the fire, you know, is another metaphor. And the fires are like, man, dude, I, there's this pressure. I'm going to get burned up, man. Like I'm going to be left into ashes. And, yeah. and I think so many times in life we, 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 we try to curse the fire, Right. And, and so the idea is that, like, with God, there are never any wildfires, only controlled fires. Mm -hmm. And certain scriptures talk about, uh, you know, and, and there's a, I know a lot of your listeners, they might even be into God or try, it doesn't matter because it still relates. Sure. It's, we can still feel this. Business has fire, like bro. Like cer certain, certain um, you know, the, the Bible talks about how the fire is there to purify you, right? It's it's there to refine you. Yeah. And so the the fire is for you. and. And, and trials, um, and, and I'll end this little story with this, this part of the story is um, when, when it was Wednesday, I was hop hospitalized, you know, Monday, when it was Wednesday, they're doing that test on me. You know, what's your, you know, what day is it? What's your name? You know, I can't talk. Right. And then they said, what's your children's names? You knew them. No, immediately. no. I said 40. I have three kids, Kylie, Josiah, and, and Jaslyn. After I said 40. Hmm. And then I knew, bro, something I knew. It was like, it's like right before blackout drunk. That's what it felt. That's what it felt like. Like you're like, you're about to be blacked out, but you can still. I wish I didn't know that feeling. <laughs> me too. But I'd be lying. Me too. Yeah, me too. I'd be lying as well. And, um, but it's right. It's like, you can kind of, and like, I knew this isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't good. I looked at my wife after I said 40, I looked at her. She's standing by my hospital bed. And I said, and I was crying and I said, count, I said, count it all joy. Plain as day. Count it all joy. And the doctor goes, what did he just say? And Natalie said, he said, count it all joy, which is a Bible verse from the mm -hmm. book of James chapter one that says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Mm -hmm. Knowing that your faith 
and your perseverance, it's tested, but it's making you mature and complete. Like the, the fire is for you. That's incredible. Dude, I can't remember what day. I can't remember my own name, my kids' names, Natalie's names. I don't know. I don't know anything, but something deep down inside, I was able to like pull out a, a, a part of a scripture sure. in context of what was happening. Yeah. Count it all joy. So chapter one's count it all joy. That was almost a book title, but it ended up being the fire. It's still been a good book title. But I would tell you, this is super relatable, everyone. Like this is a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this, but everything you're talking about is relatable, whether it's a medical actual yes. situation, but even if you brought it over to business, there's no business in this planet that is puppy dogs and rainbows and everyone prints money and they shit gold all the time. It doesn't happen. <laughs> right. 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 And so if you're out there listening to this or watching this, I want you to be very clear. We're here talking about this man's life's work, but it's relatable to you because of what you're saying. There will be fire. There will be storm. There will be valleys. Yes. And it is the people that persist through that. Yes. Just like you did with your medical scenario that actually come out on top over time. Yes. Myself, uh, I know our friend Sperber talks about this all the time. The longevity is because we keep going in spite of the failures. Yes. Same idea. Yes. Whether it's medical, whether it's a family scenario, whether it's a husband and wife, whether it's, it's great. there's fucking fire. Yes. And it's, and it's hot. And you get to make a choice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it is a genuine choice. You get to look in the mirror and say, am I going to fight the fight or do I give up and passively live the rest of my life? Right. And, and, it's, you, wor- and it's worth the fight. Every time. Out, outlive the fire. Outlive the trial. Outlive right. the problem. Outlive the critic. Yeah. Outlive the naysayer. Like, di- keep, I love that. Keep freaking going every go time. yeah and in and, and this is you know there's so many angles you and i could go in at right yeah um but i think what is really important for the people to know is the word of what you're able to give to so many people not just within your church but think about the impact you're making with all the athletes yeah the high level entrepreneurs that you make such a massive impact on right yeah. i mean you are a highly sought after individual in a general sense but one thing i want to get your your take on I'm a firm believer. I just had the blessing to speak at uh, Clever Summit. Mm -hmm. And because of the timing, what I was going to talk about did not happen. But what I was going to talk about is the power of people. Mm. Talk about the power of people in your life. Because I firmly believe you will be richer emotionally, psychologically, financially, and go bigger, higher, and better if you understand the power of the people that you're surrounded by and who you can network with. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Great. Okay. So think about this. The book of Proverbs is 31 chapters, okay? Proverbs is, it's called a wisdom book, one of the wisdom books. 31 chapters written by King Solomon. King Solomon is considered the wisest person who's ever lived, okay? So in Proverbs, it talks about 16 types of friends, associations that you should not be around. Mm. Now, church people are like, I thought you're supposed to love everybody and be, you are. But, but think about it like this. For, for every one of us, we have two types of friends, two types of business colleagues, two types of business partners or whatever, associations. Okay, one, one type is that, that, that they're a ca- they're a, there's, there's casual friends and there's close friends. There's casual business connections and there's close ones, right? So the, the casual ones are a result of circumstance. Mm. You're on my football team. You're, you, you know, you're, you're on my sports team. You're like my gym bros, gym bro. You happen yeah. to work out at the same gym that I do. Yeah. So like you're a casual friend, casual friends are a result of circumstance. Okay. Okay. And then we all have close friends and close friends are a result of choice. Mm-hmm. So Proverbs talks about 16 types of friends to not be close friends with lazy people. That's what it said. I mean, one lazy of the one of first like well, lazy people, you know, because uh, uh, who gravitates to lazy people? Like, I yes. don't want to belabor the point, but like, you will not see you. And by the way, your pastor so respect. Like, no, you won't see me with lazy people. You yes. won't see Sperber with lazy people. Like, yeah, just says, we don't vi- like we don't know what to say. People getting after it, lighting the world on fire, like minded. And you want people, if you can, that can pull you up, not that where you're pulling everybody else up. If, if you can get a seat at the table. If you can get a seat at the table, whatever table that even even if you got to buy the seat at the table for a while, facts, dude, buy it. Get I in cut the a room every year, yeah, every yes. year to be yes. at tables that are way larger than I could ever get just shaking hands right? on your own, no doubt, 100%. no doubt. And and there's value in that. Yeah. And and I think um, it, there's so much. The, the, you're talking about people, right? And and the power of people. 
man, people, people can make you or break you. They can pull you up. They can pull you down. They can make you better. They can make you worse. They can make you lazy or they can make you work totally. hard. The people are contagious. And so, and, and not only about the people that were around, but, but the person that you are, mm. like, who are you? Yeah. Like you, you become the person that you want to be around. Mm -hmm. And then the people you want to be around, they want to magically appear. They want to be around you. That's right. Exactly. Dude, this has been, I mean, just because we have a short amount of time, I want to get to the meat and potatoes. Yep. This book is going to change hundreds of thousands of people's lives, if not millions. Yeah. Let's, it, the fastest we can, describe really the entirety of this book as best you probably can. Right so now. one thing I've noticed about humanity and life, it doesn't matter if you make a lot, make a little, if you have a business or you don't have a business or you have 50 businesses whether you're a high school athlete or a pro athlete, whether you're a pro athlete or you're, you know, a, a hall of famer, um, is that, is that life is hard. Mm -hmm. Life is hard, man. Life is really, really hard. And it keeps hard. coming at you. Keeps coming. It That's never it. stops throwing blows. And uh, I was interviewed by the LA Tribune about the book a few weeks back. And they said, uh, if there's one, one thing you would want people to get out of this book, what would it be? And I said, hope. I love that. Getting because shivers. if you don't have hope, man, you don't have anything. Hope. I need hope. Hope for my marriage. Hope for my child. Hope for this sickness. Man, I, somebody's diagnosed with cancer. I need I need hope. Diagnosed with the life-threatening. I need hope. My wife, I found out she cheated on me. I need some hope. My husband cheated on me. I need hope. My child, what like so the the book really is my my hope is that it provides hope that's right and it's real life stories that are absolutely insane and hard to believe because they're not normal i mean they are they are miraculous so the the book is really chopped you're up. you're not normal dude yeah and i say that in the very best way think about your childhood think about how you're raised think about the, what you've overcome think yeah. about you are the go-to guy for how many athletes yeah. you're the go-to guy for tens of thousands of people in the phoenix area i guess you're not normal yeah yeah no. to the best of the degree yeah right man i'm 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 privileged and and as right. i'm i'm you know i'm fortunate i'm blessed i i take it serious um i i try to honor god and honor people as the best as i can um but you know the reality is is that um i'm trying to do my part mm -hmm. in, in a really big world and ho hopefully hopefully this book the fire is for you we'll, we'll really make an impact on on people's lives because that's the whole point and it's going to be everywhere right anywhere that they can it'll be it, it, obviously but everywhere yeah. else fire is for you yeah. coming out in november yeah, the pre-sale drops November 17th, Let's go. Um, and that's that's the big date. It'll be on Amazon, Barnes, and it'll be everywhere. It'll be everywhere you can buy a book. It'll be there. I love that. Yeah. Everyone, this is Travis Hearn, Pastor Trav, and now a good friend of mine. Make sure you follow him. Make sure you grab that book, and make sure you stay tuned to everything he does on social media because he makes a massive impact. Pun intended. Pun intended. That was a good one. Man. All right, y'all. That is the end of the Entrepreneur DNA. Stay tuned for the next episode. And if you like this just a little bit and you like Travis Hearn, make sure you share it with two people. Peace.